Hey, it's Josh again. I've made a bunch of videos in the last week or two about unit testing WordPress plugins. Um, and I keep talking about the limitations of unit testing, like these isolated tests that don't use uh, uh, WordPress or MySQL or other plugins. They just have you know, isolated tests. You have to mock everything. And I've showed that you now plugin machine gives you tooling to make mocking easier. Um, and I've showed you a few cases where it sort of makes sense, but um, I already have my screen shared. So uh, this video is about integration tests. There are videos with like uh, tests that have WordPress, have MySQL loaded. And before I start like build one with Plugin Machine to talk about, I just want to note that I have some um, stuff I'm working on open. Like this is the um, trusted login plugin uh, that I'm working on with Zach. And it has integration tests. It has literally no unit tests. We're working on end-to-end -end tests. Those unit tests they just weren't worth it for this kind of stuff, where it required all kinds of mocking. Um, there's a little bit of mocking in here of the API for some of the tests. Close that out. I also wanted to note, like, this is the source code for plugin machine. And I was working on some tests that are in the unit tests, uh, which you'll note there aren't a lot of, and they're all kind of short files. Like this test, if like I have a class that does replace exact, replaces things using regex, um, just a utility for that. And we're just testing that um, this can turn pasta sauce into what uh, in this term. So those are good unit tests. I just wanted to. Um, a few of those uh, end-to-end -end tests and then tons of integration tests. So don't feel like unit tests are the best kind of test. Um, depending on the context, what you're testing, I really think that integration tests are where most of the juice is, if that makes sense. So let's log in the plugin machine here. Um, and let's create, yeah. right, don't worry. Let's create a new plugin here um, and let's call this um, hamsters. I don't know why hamsters. And click save. Does not have code base. One of the things the plugin machine is really great for is like, I don't have to go over how to set this stuff up and what to install because we need to be able to run these locally which we're going to need like a server for database and stuff. We need to run them in CI, like in GitHub Actions. All that's going to happen kind of automatically for us here. Um, Fill this stuff out. Last time I did it, I checked unit tests, but not WordPress integration tests. This time I'm going to check both so you can see how they can live together. But we're going to look at the integration tests. So save and then click down. I didn't click it the first time. OK, anyway, let's extract this and open it up in VS Code. Let's look at our readme here. We're already installed. We're going to play with any JavaScripts today, but we do need to install our dependencies. So this is going to set up. Um, we now have unit tests here. So it's got Yoast polyfill set up, which will also be in our integrations. Um, and it's got all these mocking stuff set up. Um, I did like three or four videos about mocking in unit tests. We, this is necessary here, this WP insert post call, where we mock it, because unit tests don't have WordPress loading. And, and there's all sorts of limitations there. Um, that by you can do a lot of good work with unit tests, but you need an integration test as well. And so let's split this here and compare these two. 
these are environment tests. I like to have them. So there's a um, just a way to see that the system works. So I can do like here. And so my unit tests are passing. And that means that all of these things, the auto loader, the uh, Yoast polyfills, the uh, mocking stuff is working. And so I'm going to have a similar test in my WordPress test. But you will notice I don't have to, um, like, WPDB is just an object in the global namespace here. Nice. Um, and WP and Surprose just works. Um, these tests require a lot of stuff that I don't want to install in Windows um, across multiple Linuxes, just too much to manage. Um, that's why we have this Docker Compose file. It's got a WordPress site. It's got a special container for PHP unit. It's got WPDP. It's got two database servers, one for testing, one for regular. So you know, in testing, you want to erase your database after each test. Don't want to mess with the main site. So if we look in the readme, it's going to tell you how to do this stuff, how to set up the local development. Look here, it says enter container, PHP in it. So uh, this has to actually create the rest of the stuff for local development as well first. So take a second. Great. So we're just going to do composer. There you did install those are test WordPress. We're going to expect this to run one test. Cool. One test with two assertions. It's this one. That's neat. Um, because this inserted a post and then um, because it's a real deal post. We should be able to write a test like this. Assert same. Uh, the title of that post was Roy. Um, get post ID post type. Like that should work. This is a real. Yeah, see, that worked. Um, I want to just show you how this is set up. There is two PHP unit files. Uh, .xml, these are config files and those composer commands that are documented in readme for test and unit test WordPress call different ones. Um, this bootstrap file here is only for the integration tests. It sets up the WordPress test library. Um, somehow down in the background, I don't know. Um, we saw all this stuff happening. Um, and then we're including the main file of the plugin here. And if you're like, hey, Josh, I want to test something that requires WooCommerce, install WooCommerce in the subdirectory here, and then require it. Right, you have the directory, do this. If I have WooCommerce checked out to a directory called Woo, then I can just load it. It's great for when you're developing add-on plugins as well, like for your own plugins. So that's there. We have this environment test case. And now if I wanted to, um, for example, in uh, a video before just to show a difference, I think I still have that code here. Um, I did a video on testing hooks, um, right, where I was relying on all this mocking here. Cool. But I close this out again. What if I wanted to have a class here called filter type? Just always apply a title to a filter on the title 
filter apply some formatting. What namespace are we? Hamsters, yeah. This doesn't do anything, but it gives us something to work with. Um, and then we can just go right here into hooks, right? See it in the hooks file. Sorry, my phone is ringing. Um, the, um, we can go into here and go like add filter the title. And then what was that? That was like and then the callback was callback. And so now I've added this hook, right? That's correct. And then going to copy this stuff here, make another test, and call this hooks test. Test case public test filter title added. So in my last, the video I did about unit testing, where we were mocking, writing unit tests for hooks. Um, that was all mocking based. So, um, but I had set up, but I was using Brain Monkey to mock uh, add action and has action. So I'm gonna write something very similar here where I'm gonna do this. Assert same, and because remember add action as filter will return um, priority um, of the callback if we have it. Um, and so I need to make sure to get exactly the same reference here, which is made easier by the fact that this is a static class. That's how I prefer to do this. So last time I ran one test, three assertions. This time we'll expect two tests for. See if that passed. And what's better about this, if I bring back up this test from before, this was in the other video. Here, I intentionally called the thing that adds the hook. And then I check, does it add the hook? OK. It's a little contract, right? But this time, I didn't do anything. I just checked the effects of the plugin loading. And that um, is something I wanted to show because, you know, this kind of line, you don't think much about that. You probably do it right. You might mess it up later, though, and then you lose it. So that's the value of this kind of test. Also, there's, it's not contrived. It's just how it really works. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to point out about this kind of test is that this much test, even if we don't get around to testing all the complex stuff in the callback, it at least shows that you can run this and not have um, a failure. So like sometimes I'll just write tests that like instantiate my main classes. I'll call it like fast test. I'll just be like, I mean, we sort of had that test here where we're just calling one method from the um, auto loader here. This is my main plugin class. Like, you know, I had to call the initializing function and that didn't throw a bunch of errors. Neat, right? Um, 
or show that I don't have fatal errors in like all the classes that get instantiated when my plugin is initialized. That's really useful. Um, so I just wanted to show um, a little bit more about these kind of integration tests because I think they're really powerful. Um, let's write something like create post um, by name, right? When you want to like create posts that are like blank posts. That should be post title. Post title is post. All right, something like this. Um, we can. Uh, this should be an N7 class, but I just want that video done uh, without too much more. Create posts by name. I just wanted to show instead of setting up uh, all that mocking for WP insert post, like I did in one of my er even earlier videos, this one I can just go plugin equals new plugin post ID equals. Name, we'll call it Roy. Roy is a great name. And then um, is integer post ID. Now, this is kind of testing that WordPress works correctly in a sense, but it's also making sure that I don't go back and mess with this. Like, oh, shoot, I'll just make sure that it, um, I'll just have it return an array with post title and ID. Okay, fine, but something was assuming. Like this is an important assumption about our code that we're putting in to our tests. Neat, huh? Uh, and then uh, this assert same. Um, get post, post ID, post type. Okay. So let's just run that again. Oh, I did not bring this into scope, it appears. Yeah, this should work. I used a made up um, searching, search true is in to post it. There we go. It's not obvious from all these videos I made. I don't know most of these assertions off the top of my head. Um, I just rely on autocomplete to tell me. Don't try and memorize them. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to want to do here is like test the uh, like if we can introduce a problem here. If empty name or stir post stir len maybe yeah stir len name is greater than no it's less than five. Throw new exception. Um, too short. Okay. So, what's this test is now going to fail uh, because Roy is a too short of a name. So we'll make it less than or equal to three to because that's 
obviously we want to accept that. Um, no, we're doing this the wrong way anyway. Oh, somebody uses the name is two letters long. That happens all the time. Yeah. All right. Like, think about this. Like, it makes you think about your assumptions. I was like, oh, make the name five. Yeah, but I'm using a person's name here, and two letter names for people are very popular. Uh, so, anyway, here's the point is that um, what we want to do is say you have to have um, this, this is the name of a title. We could be confused if I using this. We want to do is we want to do this effect exception of the exception class, and then we're going to do the thing. Um, we're just going to do this. Post name has to be longer than one character. So we're just going to put in one. Now we'll make it five. We'll go. Yes. So we're just expecting something to fail here. Cool. This is a quick video um, showing how I, the difference between some unit testing and some uh, in integration tests. And I also show you how I created a plugin that has both types of uh, testing, both integration and unit testing. Um, I'll make sure that it pops up one of the videos with the whole PHP unit playlist so you can go back to some of the unit testing videos. Um, if you want to get started on tests in your WordPress plugins, um, you can use Plugin Machine to show you how. Um, but I do recommend if you've already got code, start with integration tests. You're going to have to do some refactors probably for unit tests, which is fine. But I, you'll feel better about those refactors if you have some integration tests. Uh, the show if you broke anything. So stay tuned to this channel for more, uh, like subscribe to this channel, like and subscribe uh, for more videos about integration testing and unit testing, building WordPress plugins. You can also go to wordpluginmachine.com slash subscribe to sign up for the newsletter. Thanks.